The M1 MacBook Air is not the best MacBook that Apple makes, but it is the best value for most people, and I'll prove it to you. There's no question that the M1 MacBook Pro is more powerful when you're looking at sustained performance. So if you're doing something like rendering a video, it will do it faster. The MacBook Pro also has a brighter display, longer battery life, and depends on whether you're shopping on the Apple website or Amazon, it will cost you between two to $300 more than the MacBook Air. So why am I saying that the Air is a better value? Let me break it down for you. As far as configuration, both come with the exact same M1 chip with an eight core CPU, but the MacBook Pro is only available with an eight core GPU and the MacBook Air is available with a seven core GPU or an eight core GPU. But first of all, for the majority of users, this extra GPU core isn't gonna make any kind of noticeable difference. And second, with the configuration that I'm going to recommend to you, if you really want that eighth GPU core, it's only gonna cost you an extra 50 bucks. Now looking at RAM, both come with eight gigs and can be upgraded to 16 gigs. And as far as internal storage, both start at 256 gigs and then can be upgraded to two terabytes. Now the price of upgrading is exactly the same. So if you wanna go from eight gigs to 16, it's gonna cost you 200 bucks on the MacBook Air and 200 bucks on the MacBook Pro. And the same is true for internal storage. If you wanna go from 256 to 512, it's 200 bucks on both. And I'm pointing this out because it's not like you can spend more money and then upgrade the MacBook Pro to 32 gigs of RAM or four terabytes of internal storage. You still have the same exact maximum capacity. So there's no real advantage there. Now you might be saying, okay, fine, but what about battery life? Before we get to that, let me give you my configuration recommendation. When the MacBook Air came out, I said that the average user can easily get by with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage. This is the configuration that I have and it's been working great for me. And now after using it for months and seeing how powerful it is, it's very hard for me to believe that as a student or an average user, you would need any more power than the M chip has for a really long time. And because of that, I would consider going to 16 gigs of RAM and then 512 gigs of internal storage so that in four, five, or six years from now, you're still nowhere near needing to upgrade. Now, another reason to get 16 gigs of RAM is if you wanna run Windows on your MacBook with Parallels. You could do it with eight gigs, but you'll get much better performance with 16. Now, I've kind of talked about price a little, but let me quantify this for you. So when the MacBook Air came out, the eight core CPU, seven core GPU version, with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of internal storage was $999. Now I normally reference the prices on the Apple website, but right now you can get the same machine on Amazon, this is new, not refurbished, for $899. And that makes it a ridiculously good value. If you're not in the US and you're watching this, let me know if prices have changed where you live because I'm curious to see if this is happening everywhere. If it is, it could be an indication that the new MacBooks are coming. Now I know that I just talked about configuration and price, but in doing research for this video, I came across a crazy twist that might make you do a double take and I'll get to it in a later section. All right, now let's get to battery life. Yes, it's true that the MacBook Pro has better battery life than the MacBook Air. So regardless of what you're doing, streaming a movie, doing office work or photo and video editing, the MacBook Pro will last longer. But you know what? Both last so long that at the end of the day, I don't run out of power with either one. It just means that I have more battery to spare with the MacBook Pro. Now, the reason I know the MacBook Pro has better battery life is because I ran battery tests, but in practice, it hasn't been a meaningful enough difference since I always charge both overnight. Now, if for some reason you don't have access to an electrical outlet every night and you don't have an external battery, that would be a reason to consider the MacBook Pro. Also, if you're an extremely demanding user who's compiling or editing or rendering video, then again, you should consider the MacBook Pro, but my guess is that that type of user is already getting the Pro, and for the target audience for the MacBook Air, this added battery life isn't necessarily going to offer a meaningful enough difference in real life. Now, one other difference between the two laptops is that the MacBook Air comes with a 30 watt charger, and the MacBook Pro comes with a 60 watt charger. But again, this hasn't proven to be meaningful in actual use because they're both fully charged by the next time that I need them. This is not to say that faster charging is not an advantage, it is. It's just that it's different from a phone for me. Like I might have my phone on the charger for 15 or 20 minutes at a time, and I want it to charge as fast as possible. With my MacBooks, I have them plugged in and then I don't need them till the next morning, so they're always fully charged. Now at this point, you might be thinking, okay, I don't know if the improved battery life is actually worth the extra money, but what about the display? 
Well, let's talk about it. As far as the type, quality, size, and resolution of the display, these are both 13.3 inch IPS retina displays. Both have a resolution of 2560 by 1600, the same size bezel, and both are DCI-P3 displays. The only difference is that the MacBook Air has a maximum brightness of 400 nits versus 500 nits on the MacBook Pro. Now, nits are not linear, so it's not like you're getting a display that's 25% brighter, but it is brighter. I almost exclusively use my laptops indoors, so this hasn't made a significant difference. And when I've taken both of them outside to test, I will give the edge to the MacBook Pro, but it's not a dramatic difference. If the MacBook Pro was available with a larger display, that would be an added value for me and it would make me consider upgrading. And of course we know that that's coming with the next batch of MacBooks, so let's keep that in mind. When connecting an external display, both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have the same capabilities. So without a hub, adapters, and splitters, you can only add one display. Here again, we don't see any added value with the MacBook Pro. Now both laptops also have sidecar, so I can use my iPad Pro as a wireless extended display, but again, there's no advantage when using the MacBook Pro. Now, if you've gotten value from this video so far, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know what kind of content you like so that I can make more of it. And I still see that over 90% of you are new viewers, so hit that subscribe button. Now moving on to ports, both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports on the left side and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right. When it comes to using accessories, USB-C or Thunderbolt hubs, then wired headphones or a headset, we're getting the exact same functionality from both devices. So again, there's no added value in upgrading. Now looking at the keyboard and trackpad, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have the exact same keyboard. It might be the best keyboard that I've ever used on any laptop and it's super comfortable to type on. Both laptops come with Touch ID on the top right and the one noticeable difference between the two is that the MacBook Air has function keys and the MacBook Pro has a touch bar. Personally, I really like the touch bar on the MacBook Pro, but I know from the comment section that some of you don't so I can't definitively count it as an added value. For me, it would be, but for someone who doesn't like it, it might actually be a negative, so I'm gonna call it a push. And you know what? If you've had a chance to use the touch bar, let me know in the comment section whether it was a feature that you liked or not. Looking at the trackpads, these are the best trackpads that I've used on any laptops. The MacBook Pro is slightly larger, but not to the point where it makes a noticeable difference. And I've never put the MacBook Air away and used the MacBook Pro instead just for the trackpad. Now let's look at the camera, microphone, and speakers. The camera is the same on both. It's a pretty average webcam, which is somewhat helped by the new image signal processor on the M1 chip. Like I said, it's the same on both laptops so there's no added value with the Pro. The microphone and speakers aren't the same. So here are a couple of tests starting with the microphone. So here's a sample of the microphone on the MacBook Air and the microphone on the MacBook Pro. I'm sitting about two feet away from both laptops. So this should give you a pretty good idea of what you should expect. And now let's listen to the speakers. Now let me know what you think in the comment section. Which microphone did you like better and which speakers? All right, so now let's get to performance. And we know that the MacBook Pro has an active cooling system, AKA a fan, and the MacBook Air only uses passive cooling. As the chips on both laptops get pushed to the limits, they heat up. The MacBook Pro is able to cool itself down and maintain performance, while the MacBook Air has to throttle back performance to protect the chip. Like I said in the beginning, if you need an M1 chip, and sustained performance and portability, the MacBook Pro is the right choice. But I think that a lot of people underestimate the MacBook Air because they're still thinking of the older underpowered models. Now this makes sense because in the past there was a significant difference between the Air and the Pro. But with the M1 models, we first got a huge bump in performance and then Apple didn't really do a ton to differentiate between the two. I think it's also important to accurately define your needs. The M1 chip is super capable. So both laptops wake from sleep instantly, both open apps very fast and your overall interaction with either laptop 
gives you that feeling of immediacy where everything is snappy and responsive. Having said that, performance is not a number, it's a continuum. So we can look at benchmark scores, but a person who's using a laptop for content consumption can get by with a lot less than someone who's editing multiple 4K video tracks and then adding color grading and motion graphics. Personally, I've been able to do everything I want on the MacBook Air, including video editing, and if anything at all, I would upgrade the RAM. The MacBook Pro would be a better choice if you're gaming, but if you're really looking for a true gaming laptop, I wouldn't recommend either of these. If you're a student, if you're looking for a productivity machine, if you're a creator, or if you're just looking for a really great all around light, portable, and powerful laptop, the MacBook Air is extremely hard to beat. Now, the whole concept of the MacBook Air value comes down to the fact that I think you can put that upgrade money to better use. Something like a super fast external SSD, which would give you outstanding performance and the ability to share files between multiple devices. I did a comparison of some of the most popular models, and if you're curious about which one was the best value, I'll link to that video in less than a minute. In doing research for this video, I saw that on Amazon, the M1 MacBook Pro has come down from $1299 to $1099. So while the base MacBook Air dropped by $100, the base MacBook Pro dropped by 200 bucks. So now the difference between the two is only $200. Does this change my mind? Maybe, but here's how I look at it. Assuming I have 900 bucks, I'm getting the base MacBook Air. If I have an extra 200 bucks, then I'm still getting the MacBook Air and either adding eight gigs of RAM for a total of 16 or jumping up to 512 gigs of internal storage. If I then have an extra 200 bucks, I'm adding the other things. So then I end up with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage. And only if I'm ready to spend $600 more than the base MacBook Air, then I'm getting the MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of internal storage. Remember that I have links in the description to all the products I talked about. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch one of these videos. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.